Before participating in the following activity, there are some important things we want you to do. Please remember to practice physical distancing of at least six feet from anyone that is outside of your home. Wear comfortable and proper shoes. Make sure you have an open space around you with no objects or obstacles in the way. Use the proper equipment or alternative objects you can find in your home. And last, stay hydrated and have fun. Hi everyone. I hope you're all keeping safe and healthy during these crazy times. And in order to do that, we know you've had to uh, stay home uh, a lot more than than you usually are used to. And we know your Special Olympics golf programs are suspended until at least June 30th, and we're not sure what's gonna happen after that. But uh, that doesn't mean you can't do some practice. Uh, there's lots that you can do at home. Um, and in fact, uh, Tess and I are in our backyard right now. Uh, I'm Coach Mike from the Niagara Chippewa Chippers. And helping me today is one of our chippers, Tess. Morning, SO athletes. <laughs> and Tess is going to help us with uh, one of the most important parts of our golf game, and that's the warm up. Uh, because you, before you get out on the golf course, you want to make sure that your muscles are nice and loose, uh, that you aren't tense, and before you start taking very big swings with your golf club, you want to make sure you're stretched and you're warmed up. And today we're going to be doing uh, a warm-up that's one of the favorites of our um, Team Canada coach, Glenn. It's a dynamic workout, uh, so it gets all those, especially the big muscles, nice and loose and, and warmed up. Um, and it's in this case, we're, um, we have our golf clubs. We're not going to use them throughout the whole thing, but uh, we use them for a little bit of stability and a couple of cushions. So the first exercise we're gonna do is just some leg swings. And that's okay if you have the golf club. Yeah. And if you can do this without the club, yeah, it's, it's okay. even better because it helps your balance. Um, but if you wanna start out by, by using the club, that's okay. And we're just gonna do some leg swings front to back. And so with the club in your right hand, you're gonna swing your right leg forward and back and we're going to do 10 of those right Tess? Yes we are okay. Coach Mike. Okay ready set <coughs> go. One. <coughs> Two. Nice and high. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay, switch clubs or switch uh, sides switch, so with your yeah, left switch hand. Yeah, switch sides. And we're going to swing our left leg, right, Tess? Yes, Coach Mike. Okay, left leg, ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Okay, the next one, uh, similar exercise, but we're going to go side to side. So this time, put the club in your right hand, and uh, we're going to swing our right leg back and forth, left to right. Ten times, Tess, okay? Okay. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, switch sides. Okay, Tess, on you. You're gonna start us off. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> okay, we had a little bit of trouble keeping balance, both of us on the left side there. So the next one, you can use the golf club or you don't have to, uh, but this is just some hip rotation. So with a nice athletic stance, your legs, you know, a couple, foot and a half apart, we're just gonna rotate left and right. Ten, 
10 of those tests? Sure, Coach Mike. Okay. One, two, three. And the further you can go around, four, the better. Five, six, seven. So these are all the muscles that you use eight, in your golf swing. Nine, ten. Okay. And then. For this one, uh, we don't need our clubs, right? Tess, we're just going to no, do... No, we don't. We're just going to do... Um, we're going to practice the loading and swinging. So again, golf stance, nice and athletic. And we're going to make a swing to the left. So we're going to load up on the right. Tess, load up on the right and swing left. One, two... Okay, on the other side now. Let's do three of those. We'll load up on the left. One, two, three. All right. Okay, the next exercise. Uh, again, um, you can use a golf club if you want to. It's better if you can do it without. It's good for, uh, for your balance, but we don't want anybody to fall over. So for stability, you can use a golf club. So with the club in your right hand, we're gonna bring our left knee up to our chest and we're gonna rotate three times. In and out. One. In. Two. Out. In. Three. Out. Okay, now we're gonna switch sides. Club in your left hand. <coughs> Grab our right knee and the wider you can swing that knee, the better. One. One. Two. Three. Okay, good. And the next one we're going to do, we don't need our golf clubs for this one. Uh, and if you can move up a little bit closer there, we're going to do a lunge to the side. So we're going to grab, we're going to start with the right knee, we're going to pull it up to our chest. And we're going to lunge to the right. One. One. Two. Two. And one more. Three. Three. And now we're going to switch sides. We're going to lunge to the left, grab our left knee, pull it up. And one. One. Two. Two. And three. three. Good. Okay. So now our next exercise, uh, and that's why we have the, the cushions out here, because if you have a hard surface, you might want to have something that you can put your knee on. If you're on the grass, it's, o it's okay. Uh, this one we're going to get down on our, we're going to start off getting down on our left knee first. And we're going to put our right knee up in the air. And we're going to reach back with our left hand to touch our left ankle and the other arm goes up in the air and we're going to hold it for five minutes. Uh, yes. One, two, three, <coughs> four, five. Okay, on the same knee we're going to switch hands and reach the other hand back towards our ankle. Do another big stretch for One. five. Two, three, four, five. Okay, and we're going to switch knees this time. And you'll find that it's probably easier for you on one side than the other, then that's natural, depending on whether you're right handed or left handed. And for, for me, uh, you know, loose on one side, stiff on the other. So on this one, right knee up in the air. We're going to reach back with our left hand, touch our ankle, and reach up <coughs> in the sky, and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to switch. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. <clears throat> Size. Uh, we want to spread our feet apart and this one's going to be another stretch. So with our left toe pointing forward, we want to make a T with our right toe.
slide your legs maybe just a little bit further apart to us. And then what we want to do is reach down with our right hand to touch our right toe and reach up to the sky with your left hand. And hold it for five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Now we're going to switch, legs apart, left toe pointing forward, right toe in a T. That's it, you got it, Tess. We're going to reach down with our left hand, touch our left toe, and right hand up in the air for a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Good stretch. Okay, and our last exercise is a little bit of a shuffle. So we're gonna move this stuff out of the way. We've got to go back and forth. So uh, on this one, we're gonna have a bit of an athletic stance. Arms out in front, and we're gonna shuffle to the left to a count of three, and then we're gonna to swing to the left. Okay, pass on one, two, three, go. One, one two, two, three. three. Swing right. One, One, two, two three. three. Swing right. Good. Now you can do that. We just did it once because there's a limited space here, but you can do that, you know, three or four times, whatever works best for you. Hi everyone. My name is David Pritchard and I'm the manager of the Special Olympics Mississauga golf program. We're called the Golf Rangers. And this is Kevin Pritchard. He's one of our golf rangers. We're going to show you today how you can practice your putting, your putting and chipping at home. And we've added a little bit to make it more interesting for you is we've put together a little competition that you can have. So you can compete with yourself or you can compete virtually with your friends. So it doesn't mean you have to go to the course. Putting and chipping are two of the most important parts of this game. And especially on the green, putting is so important. And so we're going to do competition on the three-foot putt and the six-foot putt. Those are the two most important putts in golf. Those are the putts that you want to sink with one shot. So what we've done for you is we have set up, this is in Kevin's bedroom, and what we've done to protect the walls and everything else, we put a pillow on the floor right up against the wall. We've got a nice plastic cup. You can go get one of your nice packs of cups. Get a wide mouth one. Put a shoe on each side to hold it in place so that it makes it very easy to do. Now, Kevin also has a putty, what they call a putting aid, and you can pick them up at the stores, but you don't need to spend the money on that where you can actually put it in. So we want to show how you can just use things at home. So we have marked off the floor for three foot and six foot putts. I've marked, marked, and all we've done is put a four, one of Kevin's shoes at the three foot mark and one at the six foot mark. So Kevin's going to shoot, and we're going to show you how Kevin gets prepared for when he's playing golf. Kevin's balls, these are very inexpensive that you can get at almost any store. And what it is, it fits over the top of the ball with a marker and allows you to put this nice line on the ball. And if you watch golf on television, you'll see that many, many pros have that same mark on their ball. This allows them to line the ball up to where they want to go. Kevin, show us the bottom of your putter. If you'll see on Kevin's putter, right here, there is a line. Let me let it go, Kevin. There is a line on the putter. Most putters have that line on it, and it's designed so that once you've lined up the ball with that nice big one, you line up the mark on your putter with it. It makes life easier, and it makes it easier for you to see. So we're going to start, and we're going to, what we've done, and I have this available, I can send it to anybody that needs it. We've set up a little sheet that's a competition sheet. And the idea is there's a three foot putt, a six foot putt, and for when we do the chipping afterwards, and it allows you to hit the ball 10 times. What you'll do under number one when you hit it, if you put the ball in the hole, you'll put a check mark. If you miss it, 
you'll put an X. And the idea is to see how many check marks I can get so that the next time that you are practicing, if you only got three check marks this time, maybe you want to get four the next time and see if you can get better. And then you can add to it by saying, how many check marks in a row did I get? So this is a good way to turn your practice into a little competition, have a little fun with it, and learn with it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put, drop the ball at the three foot mark and Kevin's going to show you how he lines his putt up and how he marks it. You'll notice he carries a ball marker with him on his hat. And what he'll do is he will line up the mark on the ball with where he thinks he can put it in the cup. And he's going to take a practice swing to get the feel of it. Now one thing I want you to notice, especially for, for those of you who are putting, it's the shoulders here that do the work and the hands stay still. What you don't want to do, back a bit Kevin, what you don't want to do is the wrists turning and making the motion. It's not the wrists at all. They must stay still. It's like a pendulum. So if you watch Kevin's shoulders, you'll see that nice move through and see him set himself quiet. It's most important that you stay quiet. Okay? Now, these cups are, are not as wide, normally as wide as what there is on a, a golf course. And you'll see that that's more on that one there that's wider. So the idea is you want to get it into that little hole if you can. And like I said, we would have put a neck, we would have put a next on the number one. Okay. Now I'm also Kevin's caddy. So I can always help him line up. If I don't think he's lined the putt up right, I have the, the ability to be able to say, you know, make your line right. Okay. Like I said, you'll notice that it's a little short back swing and you push through the ball and there it goes. That's how you want to do it. So rather than take all the time to show you all 10 shots for the sake of time, at home you would do 10 shots from the three foot mark and you would record each one it is to see how many that you get in. So what we're gonna demonstrate now is the six foot putt. I'm going back to the six foot mark. It's exactly the same thing. This is a little little more of a test, but again, this is a putt that you would love to make. The one thing I want to stress is, do this on carpet at home. Please do not attempt to do this on hardwood floors or on ceramic floors. The ball will bounce everywhere. Something is going to get hurt or you're going to damage something. You'll notice we have this set up with the pillow and everything else to make sure nothing gets damaged. And that's a huge thing. We don't want to break anything. And the idea of practicing this, this at home, Kevin often practices his putting at home to get the feel of how hard I need to hit a three foot putt and how hard I need to hit a six foot putt. You don't want to put it through the wall. All you want to do is get it in the hole. Very nice. Like I said, that cup is not that big, so on a regular course, that draw would have dropped in the hole because there's a bit of a lip on the cup, so it takes a little bit to bounce it in. But you'll notice that each time Kevin lines up his ball. He just doesn't stand there and hit ball after ball. You have to make sure that you go through that same routine. Take the, he'll, he'll take a little practice shot just to get the feel of what he wants to do. There, now 
he's got the feel for what he wants to do. Again, that's very good. One more, Kevin, and then we're... Why don't you don't move over too far this way, move over that way, but that's it. Okay, so we're going to do one more here. And like I said, the idea is to do 10 at the 3 foot, 10 at the 6 foot. And then you can also say, okay, I'm getting really good at the 3 foot, but i got to improve in my 6, so maybe you want to practice that a little more. Very good. Okay, we're going to wrap up the putting for now, but that gives you a good idea of what you can do at home. Kevin loves to do this at home to get the feel of it and everything else. He uses his other thing a little better than the cup, but you can use different things. And if you don't have a cup, cut, cut out a hole on a, on a piece of cardboard and lay it on the floor there. So there's many different ways that you can do it. So. You enjoy your putting, Kevin? Yes, I do. So, tell everybody and wish them luck. And good luck and have fun. And that's the way to do it. So that's how you can do putting at home in your room. And remember, safety first and do it on Broadloom. If you don't have Broadloom anywhere in your house, there are mats that you can buy that you can use do the practice on as well. This time we've moved into our backyard to do our chipping drills practice and our chipping competition. I showed you the sheet we have and again it's the same type of thing where we'll do 10 shots and you'll see if you can get it in there. I want to show you that there's many different things that you can use. You don't have to go out and buy a chipping net. If you take a look down here you can see we're using my wife's laundry basket. <laughs> That's a recycle bin, or you can even use a cardboard box. So you can use all kinds of things to do this. Now Kevin's going to show you how to do it. Now there's one thing I want to recommend, okay, is you use these practice balls. They're not expensive. You can get them at the store. They come in packages of six. They're the same size as a golf ball. I've got holes in them. They will not hurt anybody. They'll allow you to practice your swing a little harder because one of the things, especially when we're doing short chips like this, this is a this is a 15 foot chip shot. People have a tendency not to swing the club hard enough because they're scared they're going to shoot the ball. This will allow you to practice because you need to get the speed through the ball to get the ball up in the air. So these are great for doing it. Plus, you're not going to hurt anybody. You're not going to break any windows, so it's a safety thing. So my recommendation is this is what you should use. The other thing that's very important, if you watch the video that was put out previously by Mike and Tess Trojan, it talked about warm-up and how important it was to go through the stretching ideas and, and warm-up, and they showed you how to do it. Kevin and I are not going to do that because Kevin has already loosened and warmed up, so to save some time, we're just going to go right into chipping, but he has already done his warm-up exercises. Please don't do any of this unless you have warmed up. So, like I said, this is a 15-foot chip shot. We're going to use these balls. What I found is perfect, especially for the backyard, so that we don't tear up the lawn, is I took the mat out of the car. Here's a car mat. You can take it out of the car. It's actually perfect for hitting off of because it has that nice backing on it so it'll hold and not buckle up. So Kevin's going to show you. Now you want to use a club like a sand wedge, pitching wedge, something that has the face that opens more. If you don't have a sand wedge, a pitching wedge, you can open the club face up and force it open. Kevin. 
Kevin has a 58 degree club in his hand. He has wedges that allow that. So you can see just by looking at his club that the club face is nice and open, which allows him to hit the ball and it'll go up in the air and drop softly. So important thing is you saw, saw he took some practice swings. He was getting the feel of it. Now he's going to make sure he's lined up. He's nice and open to it. He's going to get nice and quiet. And make a nice stroke and finish up. Okay? Remember in chipping, okay, it would be nice if you could drop it in the hole every time, but the realism is you're trying to get it really close to the flag so that you do not have to putt very far. So if even though Kevin missed, he's no more than three feet away from where it is. And we were practicing our three foot putts up there, so there's a good chance he could sink them. Because you're playing from off the green. This is where, when you're chipping, you want to get the feel so you learn from each ball that you hit. That was perfect distance, just slightly off the mark, but you know, he's got a one foot putt to go in the hole. So that's a great chip. So you want to be able to do that. Like I said, learn. Just overcompensated a bit. One of the things that's very important in this game of golf is you're not going to make every shot great. Not every shot will be good. And it's learning to stay calm and not get frustrated when you make a bad shot. Nice shot. The other thing that's important to understand, Rory McIlroy is Kevin's favorite player in the present day. But learning golf and everything else, Kevin's favorite golfer was the great Ben Hogan. And he studied all his videos and everything else, and Ben Hogan had some great savings. And, you want to pick the balls up, Kevin? One of the great things is, that Ben Hogan we used to teach Kevin and to teach our other athletes was this famous saying is the most important shot in golf is the one that you're about to make. Anything else, once it's gone, you can't fix it. What you can fix is the one that you're going to hit. So never get frustrated by the fact that you mishit the ball. Learn how to hit a good ball and you'll correct it and you'll become better. Okay, just hit a couple more. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do this time, this is how you can challenge yourself a little more. Make it a little fun and see whether you can do it. It becomes a little more challenging. So now the idea is we wanna get it up in the air and drop it in the bucket. So this is just an extra thing that you can try to see whether you can do. We'll teach you to get the ball up in the air and let's see if you can drop it in. So this is just a way you can have fun with it, learn from it, and you get a lot of practice out of it. You'll notice those swings that Kevin are making, those are what you call practice swings, and he is visioning the shot that he's about to make. <laughs> Almost, nice shot. So one more and then we're going to call it for the day. This is how you can go out in your backyard, go up in your room, and you can practice. Very nice shot. So, we just want to say thank you for watching. We hope you got something out of this and learned something about how you can do it at home, how you can enjoy this game. You don't need to go to the course. You don't need to go to the driving range. Kevin can come out here and practice every day of the week if he wants.
his putting he'll practice a lot of time before he goes to bed at night so enjoy yourselves I know I just received the word that uh, there's no Special Olympics until after July 31st and that could change again so it doesn't look like we're going to get much of a summer in so go out enjoy yourself if you can get out on the range go out on the range and practice your game try and get out for a game of golf once in a while if you possibly can but in the meantime do this little practice at home and you'll find your game will improve thank you very much for listening Kevin I want to say thank you to everybody yeah. thank you for participating in Special Olympics very good and thank you Kevin for all this that's why I'm his caddy and I don't go <laughs> Hello here, Glenn Kinderi from North Bay, Ontario. We hope you enjoyed today's rules. We're at beautiful Pinedo Park Golf Course with our Special Olympics Team Ontario athlete, Mandy. So we look forward to uh, you seeing a new rule or two uh, today and uh, take care. Okay, so today's rule, you can see Mandy and I walking up the cart path here and she's discovered that her ball has ended up on a cart path. Now, we all know that when it comes to cart paths and certain types of relief, how many penalty strokes do you take in this case, Mandy? Zero. Zero, right? So we know that we don't have to have a penalty because it's not kind of fair, if you want to think of it that way, that the ball ended up on a cart path. So what we're going to do is determine the right process for taking your drop when the, cart, uh, when the ball is on the cart path. So Mandy, the first thing you're going to need to do is mark your ball, right? So you can use a T. If you have a T, you can put down behind it. And then you're going to pick it up. You can just lie it on the ground. Oh, there you go. Yeah, perfect. All right, so Mandy has marked her ball. Now, in this case, we need to determine her nearest point of relief. That means the spot that she can take relief from the cart path, so the cart path is not interfering, but not going near the hole. And as you can see here with this video, that the green is over here, okay? And you can see Mandy's tee on the cart path. So, what we're going to do is get her to determine the nearest uh, point of relief here. So Mandy, I'm going to get you to take another tee or a ball marker or something and you're going to put it on the grass, not on the cart path, but near the red tee that you just put down here. So you can place that down. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit closer to the path though, Mandy. You're right to the edge of the path, right to the edge. Keep going. There you go. Good. Now, she's determined that's her nearest point of relief. So I'll zoom in here a little bit to see. So you can see here the red tee is on the right side. The uh, blue pencil is just in the grass a little bit. Now, because it's free relief, she gets one club length and she can take her longest club in the bag. So you can use your driver, Mandy. All right, and you're gonna lie the head of the driver down by the blue tee. Yeah, good. And then you're gonna put another tee or another marker at the end of the club, okay? So here we go, you can drop that there, good. Now you're gonna pick up the driver and you're gonna drop your ball between that blue mark in the ground and where you had it. Now you'll notice that Mandy's doing a great job of dropping it from her knee. And now that ball is what we call in play. So she'll pick up that second marker that she put on the ground, that pencil that you can see here. If you wanna grab this one, Mandy, over here by the ball. Yep. yep, pick that up. And now she's gonna go ahead and hit that shot. Really great job. Okay, so uh, this is a bit of a conundrum. You can see uh, Mandy, who uh, was a Team Ontario athlete uh, last, last game cycle. She's up to the ball here. Mandy, do you think you can play that one? I can see the flag way through the trees here. And uh, I see the ball is like kind of nestled in this tree trunk and in the rough. So uh, can, you, can you stand in there and play that? What do you think? Not at all. Not at all? Stump. Tree stump. Okay, so what do you, we're going to have to do here. Well, we can we can go all the way back to the tee. Okay, so yeah, so you you're gonna take a relief, right? Mm -hmm. We call that unplayable lie when it's in a situation maybe like this. So yeah, one of your options is you can go back to where you last played your shot from. Now in this case, you hit your tee shot here, so uh, you can go back to the tee and play. Is there a penalty if you do that? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Good. So there's a one-stroke penalty for doing that. Okay. So you'd be hitting your third shot if you did that off the tee. Okay, so is there another option if you didn't want to go all the way back there? Uh, yeah, you can You can come back here, no closer to the hole. Okay, how, how far from that spot where the ball is can you go 
and drop it. Two club lengths. Two club lengths. Okay, so maybe in a minute we'll we'll try that and see. Or actually, what here? Why don't you take the driver, and I'll take that. And why don't you show us, you know, generally what two club lengths, if you went in each direction, what that would look like. So just put your club up by the ball. Yep. So you could come back this way, definitely. Yeah, good. You put a T there, great. And then. Great, so you can see that, that would get you out of there. And if you wanted, then you could hit it through the trees. Those, I can see a nice gap there for you to go. But at the same time, right, you could also go left and right of that spot, Yeah. right? So you could actually go two club lengths to the left of the tree. Yeah, so you would put your club with the balls. Yeah, right, and you can go two club lengths that way. Yeah. Okay, great. And one more. Fantastic. And then you could decide if you're feeling really brave today, you could try and go over those trees that are in front of us or maybe just chip it back out into the fairway that we can see here easily on the camera. And of course, we don't have to do it now, but you could go two club lengths to the right of that other tree as well. It would probably work. Now, what is the third option, Mandy? So the first one was to go back to the tee with a penalty. The second one was to use two club lengths like you just did in any direction, not closer to the hole. And is there a penalty for doing what you just did with two club lengths? Uh, yes. Yes, how many, what's the penalty? Uh, it'd be one. Right, one, one stroke penalty for getting that relief. Now, what's the third option? Do you remember what that was? Uh, the third option uh, would be Yeah, so not, oh, you could hit it out of there. Sure, there'd be no penalty. It might be a crazy shot, but for sure, right? The other option is you can take a spot. You could put a tee behind that ball, Mandy, for a moment. Uh, just a tee right behind the ball. Yep. And you can pick the ball up. Then what you can do is you can actually draw an imaginary line from, from the flag, which is way up in the trees here, right back to where this ball was and you can go back for infinity as far back as you want keeping the spot where the ball is and where you are going between you and the flag so you could actually go 100 yards back if you wanted to go over the trees or around the trees right and yeah and then you would take your drop just like that so whether you take a drop with two club lengths whether you went back like we just did for infinity on the same line or you went back to the tee one shot penalty. What is this rule called again? Right, right. This is the unplayable lie situation, and this happens to a lot of golfers when they get in tough spots. So, really well done. So, this rule we're going to look at right now is what to do, unfortunately, when you hit the ball out of bounds. So, you can see here, Mandy's got her driver. We're on a fairly short hole here, but you can see the white tee markers that she's going to play between. And if you look behind her here, along the edge of the golf course property line, you'll see some white stakes. You'll see uh, a couple of them, one to the left of the camera here, and then one in the middle of the screen. And those typically on a golf course define the property, the outside property of, uh, of the course. And so those are what we call out of bounds stakes. So what we're gonna do to save Mandy purposely hitting a ball out of bounds so she doesn't have bad mental thoughts about her game and doesn't unnecessarily lose a golf ball. Mandy, let's take a shot here with your imaginary golf ball with your great big blue tee and swing away. Oh no, oh no, it's gone out of bounds. Oh, look at, she's frustrated. <laughs> Good, good acting. Okay, so Mandy, let's assume for a minute that the ball has flown over the out of bounds stakes, those white stakes that we can see here. What? Uh, tell us what has to happen here. Okay, so if you can't find it, what if? Uh, what if you find it up there and it's on the other side of the white stakes? That's okay. No, that's okay. Sometimes lost ball and out of bounds are really easy to mix up. So I'm actually glad you mixed this up on camera because it gives us an opportunity to remind people that a lost ball in an area that doesn't have these out of bounds stakes, that maybe just has regular trees or bush or whatever, is different. You can find it when there's no white stakes. In this case, if there's white stakes and you think it's out of bounds, what do you have to do? 
Right, so in this case, back to the tee, maybe if you would hit it from the fairway, back to the fairway, but hitting it from where you last hit from, yeah. right? Okay, now, if you're not sure and it's close to the white, like this imaginary line between the white stakes that goes all the way up the left side of this hole, if you think it might be on the other side of the white, but it might not be on the, it might be inbounds, you can still play that, but you would need to hit a provisional from here. So you would hit one, and then go look and see if the ball is inbounds or out of bounds. If it's out of bounds, even by a millimeter, and it's sitting in the grass nice, you can't play it, you must play the provisional. But if it happens and you're lucky enough that it's inbounds, then you pick up the provisional and you go with no penalty. You good with that? Good with that. All right, give me a thumbs up on that one. Good one. Well, there's today's rule. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the, the rules of golf today. And Mandy? See you on the links.